<clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Okay. Listen, I've had a couple people bring up the whole serial killer. I'm assuming y'all mean the child molester in the same category. And you just cannot get your, several people cannot get your heads around this whole um, dealing with the serial killer aspect or child molester or rapist, murderer, whatever horrible thing you'd like to say. And uh, I want to talk to y'all about this for a minute because it's important. And uh, I want to ask you this. If you were sitting in a bar and Jack Nicholson came walking into the bar, and a nice bar, and he sat down next to you, ordered a drink, and started small talk with you, uh, my guess is you'd probably talk to him, right? No problem there. Not at all. But Jack Nicholson has played... Uh, that creepy guy in The Shining, one of the scariest parts I've ever seen. He also was the Joker in Batman movies, and he's played all kinds of villains. Right? But that's not Jack Nicholson. That's just a role he played. You're, you're not mad at Jack Nicholson. You don't even think about it when you're standing next to, sitting next to Jack Nicholson. You're very aware that that was a role, an act that he played. He didn't really hurt anyone. He didn't really kill anyone. He didn't really scare the bejesus out of anyone, right? Okay. Well, the serial killers, the child molesters, uh, you name it, whatever you want to say, those people are just playing roles. Nobody really died because there's no such thing as death. Uh, nobody was forced to do anything that they didn't want to do. All of the people that, that were the victims to all these people, wanted those roles. Now, that may not make any sense to you right now, but I assure you that it's the truth. It is the truth. And I don't understand the human 3D game. I, in my normal state, I don't normally play these kinds of games. But I've told you guys before, humans, long-term humans that have been doing this a long time, they're like the extreme sports nuts. Okay, um, it is not comfortable to climb to the top of Mount Everest without oxygen, but people do it. As a matter of fact, it hurts a lot. I've seen those shows. A lot of people die because of the situation, but they do it with all the pain because it's exciting, because it's an experience, because they want to do it. You know, there's a lot of really... Uh, uh, scary things, training for some of these, uh, okay, the Olympics, training day after day from the time you're teeny tiny in order to someday be in the Olympics and win a little medal is painful, but they do it for the experience. So I want you to try to think of it like that. This is a play, the good guys and the bad guys. Because of all the good guys that you have here, there is only one way, and one way only, that there could be good guys. Only one way. And that's if there are bad guys. Okay? So either, if you are a good guy, you either ask your friends on the other side to please, please, please come and play the bad guy so I can experience being the good guy. Or... You had other creator beings that volunteered because they wanted the experience of being the bad guy. Okay? There is never anyone is ever killed or tortured or anything against their will. Never. It doesn't happen. Whether you understand it or not right now, for whatever reason, those entities agree to play the roles. Either they were helping somebody who wanted to play the other side or they wanted to have that experience, that extreme experience for themselves. And that is true with the uh, ex-husband that does that takes off and doesn't care for their children to serial killers. Everything that you consider bad was agreed on by both sides. Now, they, that may not be believable to you because it feels so real in this 
human skin suit right now. But the reason why I want to talk to you about this is a simple one. It's easy to see the Creator God in the neighbor next door that you don't know. And you say hi and bye, and that's it. It's easy to see the Creator God to someone that you like. It's, easier to, it's easy to see the Creator God in a good guy. It's not so easy, not as easy, to see the Creator God in Charles Manson, in Jeffrey Dahmer, in the ex-husband that beat you up and your children, in the Hitler. Okay? Now, let me finish this off. You will never, ever, ever get to 5D as long as you have a problem with a serial killer, child molester, or anyone like that. Until you truly understand and truly believe that we are all creator gods, that we are doing exactly what we want to do on some level. You know, in my case, okay, my original plan was to come here, be with a certain group of people. And then the bad guys came in and switched me over to another family. Right? Okay, the higher self of my higher self agreed to that. There is some aspect of you that sees a bigger picture a bigger advantage that agrees with it. And until you can truly believe that and understand that, you cannot go to 5D. You cannot go. Because there's judgment there. When you can look at the serial killer and, and be right next to him and go, cool, I admire the game you're playing, dude. Totally admire it. Then you can't go to 5D because you've got judgment. You've got fear. You've got anger. You've got worry. You've got, I must stop. Okay? That's judgment. You can't have any judgment. What you do is, what I do, is I turn, uh, and believe me, I've had all those bad guys doing bad things to me. So I can talk about this. And what I do is I'm more fascinated now. So when I watch the good guys and the bad guys at their games, political level, um, murder level, uh, whatever level it is, day-to-day -day level, somebody just being mean and hateful. What I look at now is more fascination. It's more fascination now. I look at them and go, wow, that is, that is amazing. I know how hard it is to be, live, and exist in this plane in the lower vibrations. I know how challenging that is. So for an entity, a creator God, to agree whether or not because somebody else asked them uh, to come and do it. And a prime example here is Hitler. This is a prime example. That was that whole setup to get to the world to the point where uh, Hitler did all of those things that led to uh, the bomb being dropped, with, which led to the call by Gaia, all of that was set up to get to the call so that Gaia could get to 4D and 5D. <clears throat> and that's all hard to explain, but there was a, a uh, opening, so to speak. And that opening for uh, Hitler, just like there was an opening for Buddha and all the Jesuses and Krishna, there's an opening on the good guy's side and the bad guy's side. And it takes a very... Uh, yeah, it takes a lot on either side, on whether you're a good guy or a bad guy, to, to take on those positions. Because I don't know if you've ever walked into a room where somebody's mad at you and how bad that feels. But when you have a whole bunch of people mad at you, that is extremely painful. Okay? So a lot of times, most more times than not, more times by far, the bad guys that you are so afraid of or so angry uh, at, most of the time, those people were asked to do that so that the other, so the victims could have the experience of the victimization and even more frequently, 
they come so that their friends can play the role of being good guy, of saving the day. But usually, by far, the usual is the bad guys are doing it because somebody asked them to come play the role. That is by far higher, much higher percentage. It's because there's a lot of entities that want to come down, forget that they're creator gods, and become the hero. Lots. Quite a few entities that want to do that. And that plays out a lot here. That's the draw in duality. So there's a lot of entities that want to do that. And in order for them to have that experience of being the hero, whether or not it's a single mom taking care of the kids when he cuts out on you, or if it's a, a Jesus person, still, in order for that to happen, you have to have the bad guys. You have to have them. Otherwise, you cannot be a good guy. You have to have the bad guys. And I know that. I can see that. So I am extremely, I, I don't even just see uh, the God in these guys. And I've been tortured for decades by many people in many different ways. And I look at them and I am grateful. I am grateful that they agreed to come down and play that other side. Now, this is not a game that I want to come back to, but that's that's the way we work, the all-in-one, the all that is, the unity consciousness that we are, that we will do whatever that other entity wants. If they need help to get whatever experience done that they want done, somebody's going to step up and play that role for them. Okay? So... The important thing here is that, yeah, and yeah, I told you guys that it, this was going to be deep and it was going to be hard. But in order to get to 5D, you really have to understand truly that there's no such thing really as death. That this is a game, a very, very realistic movie. And that everybody that is playing a role in this movie... Nobody is having anything done against their will. And when you do that, there is no judgment against anyone. And what I look at is I look, it, it, to me, it becomes fascinating. Because I really don't know that much about the lower levels, the lower frequencies. It is not where I hang out. It's not what I'm drawn to. I do other games in other places in other ways. So this whole dualistic lower vibration thing, I don't have as much knowledge in those arenas. So I'm fascinated. Like everyone else, there are all kinds of, of aliens and, and entities from all over the place that come and watch this unity, I mean, not unity, this dualistic game that is going on. And they look at it from all different directions because it fascinates creator gods. It's this fascination that gets them to come and play the roles. And those roles are going to be played out forever now. There are many more 3D planets than Earth. Okay? There always have been. This was the first one where humans were on, on a planet as you know them. There have been all kinds of other aliens that didn't have access to all the range of emotions or frequencies that humans do, but there's a bunch of a whole bunch of other 3D, excuse me, dualistic um, universes and planets out there. This one's unique because it has the whole range of everything that is possible to access in the human uh, senses. All of them can be accessed here. And they're all available in the fourth dimension too. So third dimension earth was fascinating, not per se because of the pain that people put themselves in. That's not what any of it's about. Any of it's about. It's the fact that you could, you could forget who you were, are as a creator God. You can come into this game and you can play good guy, bad guy, 
uh, nobody really looks at it like like most of you do. That why would anybody come and live through all of this pain and anguish? Because outside of this game, outside of time, even if you understand time, 50 years, 80 years, okay, we'll just say 100 years. 100 years is is nothing. It's a speck. It's a tiny, it's a, it's a nothingness. It's such a short amount of time, so to speak, even though there's no such thing as time. But you guys understand what I'm saying. So a lot of entities, even ones that come back for thousands upon thousands, tens of thousands of lifetimes, still, even in the scope of time space, that's still a tiny speck of, of anything that when they decide to come in and play this game in time space, in the big picture, it is worth it. The extreme contrast from going where, from being a creator God to complete amnesia as a bad guy, I mean a really bad, bad guy, a, a serial killer bad guy, a mass murderer, a, a torture of children for 30 years. It is such a contrast that that is what the fascination is. It's all about the creation. It's not looked at it like it's uh, evil, like most of you look at it. It's not looked at that like that. It's looked at like a uh, contrast. It's looked at like a completely new way of creating experience. It's a completely unique, um, as all creations are, uh, but this one definitely is more on the extreme side. But nobody outside of this dualistic game on the lower vibrations looks as this as being good or bad. It's not looked at like that. It's simply, it's simply experience. It's simply a creationary experience. That's all. And in order to go back to unity consciousness, you're going to have to wrap your head around that. You're going to have to get back to thinking like that because that's a part of what non-judgment is. Because that serial killer, uh, Charles Manson, the entity that played Charles Manson, Jeffrey Dahmer, uh, Hitler, you're going to know who they are. When you step, when you get to 5D and you step outside of time space, you're going to know who those entities are. Immediately, you're going to know who they are. If you are, uh, this would never happen, but if you went up there and you stepped outside of time space and you went, you found out who Hitler was and you went running over to him and rah, 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 rah. Well, that's totally unacceptable. Totally unacceptable. So before you get to that point, you have to understand that this is how it was done. And there can be no judgment against anybody playing any role, no matter what it was. As I've said before, if, if you're sitting somewhere and you see somebody pull out a gun and they're getting ready to shoot somebody in the head, do I expect you to uh, to do what you can to stop it? Sure, I would expect you to. But I also, at this point, would expect you to say, well, this is an interesting game. Here I am here with that person who agreed to pull out the gun to shoot that person, and I'm here agreeing to stop that from happening what an interesting creationary game we've got going here no anger no hatred no judgment just interesting just interesting so as you're looking out through the world as you look around try to start looking at it through the standpoint of p they, these are all creator gods just like you playing roles everybody's playing a role that's what they're doing they're playing a role and just like you wouldn't hate Jack Nicholson, the person, for being the monster in the movies, I want you to start practicing on trying to not only not hate them, but love them, the monsters. I think you guys are pretty good about uh, accepting the creator gods and the, the harmless to good. What I'm pushing you do, to do now is start looking at the monsters as being good. Okay? All right. Well, okay. That should, that should give you something to think about. 
and probably some practicing to do, especially for any of the monsters that you have in your own life. Uh, that's, that's the way to look at them. But it is a part of what you need to know to get to 5D. All right. Okie doke, guys. Well, it's bedtime for me. So huge hugs. I love you guys so, so much. And I'll talk to you later. Bye now.